Hey everybody, it's Wigaholic and I am back. This is the second video in a two-part series. The first one was the ball cap method, and if you haven't caught it, I will go ahead and put the link down below. You'll wanna watch that first if you're considering doing that before what we're gonna do now, which is the installation of this little beauty right here, my Hair Mama Slavic piece. It's full lace, and it is not going anywhere. Oh, if you're new to our channel, make sure that you hit that little subscribe button and then smack that bell so that you learn new things with us. You learn my hits, my misses, my ups, my downs, my fails, my wins. Yeah, all that stuff. Also, you'll see our wig reviews, our tutorials, and all sorts of crazy stuff that goes on around here. So this video is, like I said, the second in a two-part series, the installation of this little piece. Also, at the end, I will be giving you a little bit of an update on her, and you'll want to stay tuned for that. We'll see you soon. Have fun. And here we go. The items I used in this video were an electric shaver, skin protectant, cleansing water, alcohol swabs, a brush, a spray bottle with water, some small scissors, some bold hold tape, adhesive glue, I used Isha, and my blow dryer. I think I forgot something. Oh yeah, the wig. So, the first thing you're gonna be doing is cleaning off the area around your bald cap. Now I chose to use this cleansing water, but you can use whatever you'd like. Soap, water, just something to get that area really clean and free from dirt and oil. This will help with the adhesion of the tape and the glue. The one thing I do want to mention is I probably would have cut my wig cap a little closer to the hairline. I stated that in my last video, but I just wanted to note it here as well. Now we're on to the next step. You also want to take alcohol and clean after you've used that cleansing water or whatever you're going to use to clean your perimeter. This ensures that it's free of oils, and dirt, anything that can prevent that tape and or glue from adhering well. That's the most important thing when trying to apply a full lace unit. And like mama always told you, make sure you get behind your ears. You want to get every area that's going to be exposed to your adhesive tape or your glue. It's a big must. So here's where having an assistant is helpful. April noticed that I had some hair still hanging around there that might have caused some problems with adhesion of the tape or even just getting glue or tape on them. It could have been really painful when I decided to remove the unit. So she's just cleaning up that hairline. And I had to remember to throw that towel on so I didn't get all itchy and twitchy throughout the rest of the video. So once that's completed, I'm going to grab my wig, and what I'm going to do now is just spray the perimeter of that wig with the bold hold glue. That, again, is going to help with adhesion when we apply the tape and the glue. It's just a little tip I picked up from the bold hold YouTube page, and I'll list their page down below as I did before. I also should add, I prepared the wig prior to the installation. I brushed all the hair back using water, but you can use mousse, whatever you like, and secured it with clips so it stayed in place. Boy, we're just moving right along. I wish it happened that quickly in real life, but believe me, it doesn't. We're on to the next step, and that's adding a skin protectant. I chose to use the Walker Skin Protectant. I find their products are good, but you can use whichever one you like. Mine has a little applicator on the top of the bottle, so it makes it really easy to just run it around that perimeter. I definitely found that doing it two or three times really helped to protect that area. And you wanna make sure that you let this dry completely before moving on to any of your next steps. Once the protectant is dry, you're ready to move on to the adhesive part. I chose to do a two-part step on this. I'm going to use glue as well as tape. I chose to use the bold hold tape on my application. I like the way it comes. It comes in little squares. You can rip them apart and then you can just cut them to be smaller to the size you want to use. They have that nice center peel away so it makes it really easy once you've applied to remove the top paper. So once I completed cutting all my small strips, I am ready to apply my Isha glue. 
So I like this glue because it kind of has a little purple iridescence to it when you apply it. So you're going to take it and you're going to go around the perimeter of that ball cap. Now here's something that I learned that I would do differently. I would actually go on part of the bald cap as well as my skin. I kind of felt like I did it on the perimeter of just my skin and I wasted some valuable space that I could have used to secure my wig and not have all that adhesive on my skin. Lessons learned, ladies, lessons learned. So hopefully you can see in the video that this Isha glue goes on with kind of a iridescent purple color. The thing that makes that really awesome is when it dries, it dries clear. So you can tell what's still wet and what's not. Now you want to be really careful when you're applying a glue because you don't want it to get all over your fingers like it did on mine. You want to spread it with something flat. I'm using the end of a rat tail comb. You could use a plastic knife. Whatever is easiest for you to get that on without getting it all over your fingers. Because trust me, it's a mess. So you see right here, I missed a little bit of that ball cap being secure. So now I have the glue on the surface and I'm trying to secure it all down. And look what I'm doing, getting that glue all over my fingers. Huh, wonder what it's gonna do now. Well, hopefully by now you're learning by my don'ts. Don't use your fingers. So now I'm going to take the dryer and I'm just going over that area on a warm setting to get that glue to dry to a tacky consistency. You definitely want it tacky so when you go to apply your tape it adheres really really well. And you might want to do a few layers of this glue before you put the tape on. Yep, you guessed it, I'm cleaning my dirty hands. So April is now going to apply the glue to my back area. Once again, hindsight is 2020, and I would definitely be, buy be buying, no, I'd be applying the glue partially to the bald cap so that I didn't have so much glue and product on my own skin, and it probably would have adhered better, and I wouldn't have had to pull the cap so tight. So she's just using the rat tail comb, as I did, to make a thin application of the glue. You don't want it clumpy. You will want a flat, thin application of it so that it dries evenly and it dries without any bumps or lumps. You don't want bumps or lumps in your glues, ladies, do you? I didn't think so. So now I'm just using the dryer on that low warm setting to get that glue to a tacky consistency. You really want it to make sure that it's not wet or you're seeing any whiteness anywhere because then your tape is not going to secure to that glue in the way that'll give you the strongest adhesion. And trust me, this takes a little while. I've got April going around and letting me know if she sees any white spots so that I can go back and concentrate on those. This is a long process, especially if you're doing multiple layers of glue and tape. See that? My arm got tired. Had to switch for a second there. Did any of you catch how flat the back of my head is? If not, you need to go back and rewatch that part of the video. So now we're moving on to adding the tape. If I would to do this all over again today, I would definitely move that tape back farther onto the top of the wig cap. Another lesson I learned in this process, but it is a learning process. So I'm grading myself on a curve. So I start at the center and then I'm moving my way down towards my ears. Now you see I'm putting that piece a little farther out and that's because that's where the hairline of the wig comes out just a little bit more. Now your human hair wigs generally shouldn't be straight across in the front. If they are, you either need a new wig or you have some plucking to do. I'm just saying. So this is a little tricky when you're first learning. 
And it definitely helps to have somebody who's going to do the back of your neck and the back of your ears, areas that you can't really see well, especially when you're recording a video. That little screen does nothing for your visual assistance. I'm telling you that straight out. So if you make a video, make sure you have a big mirror. My next application will definitely be done in front of the large mirror in the privacy of my own bathroom. Yeah, no, you're not getting in there, so don't even ask. So I'm finally on the last piece of tape that I'm gonna secure around my ears. I'm checking to make sure that they're all flat and that they're laying in the position I want them to be in. Now I'm gonna turn the ropes over to April and she is gonna take control. Yeah, I know. I'm kinda shocked that I'm giving that up too. Hmm, but it worked for me. Here's something I just need to keep real. I don't know how anybody is able to do this completely on their own, their first attempt. I mean, especially with it being a full lace wig. You have to secure that tape so it's not overlapping and so it's in the proper position all the way around your head and unless you have eyes in the back of your head which i don't think many people do but well you never know that would be virtually impossible it would take at least 10 times the amount of time it took me and trust me oh there's my flat head sorry squirrel it took quite a while to do this. Okay, so April is just completed installing the last piece of tape. We're ready for this little lady to go on. So she does have a strap on her so she can be a glueless wig. So I am taking that and bringing it down around the back uh, of the nape. And I'm adjusting this wig, trying to make sure that it's in the proper position and it's taking a while and I think I've got it but I'm not sure no I don't want to start there no start in the center there you go so now I'm removing the outer papers from the tape I'm starting in the center and as I do that I am going to move the wig forward and secure it on that spot I'm not going to take all of these off at once. Well, maybe I am. Okay, so I changed my mind. I'm going to remove the papers off of the double-sided tape all the way on one side, and then I'm going to secure the wig. Okay, I changed my mind again. I'm going to do it all the way across the front. April's just pulling a few of the hairs that have slipped out. You want to make sure that those hairs are away from that hairline. You don't want them stuck and sticking out of the front of your wig permanently. Okay, it wouldn't be permanently, but it would be funny. So now that I have it in position, I am just gently pushing down on those areas as I get it applied. Oh, I guess I was smart enough not to do around the ears before I secured the center of the wig. I am learning things, you know. I'm even learning them while I'm watching this video. I hope you are too. So now we have the front perimeter in place and we're working on the ears. So I'm removing the sides right around the temple area down towards the ear and I am pressing those in as I go. I'm gonna go back with my fingers and make sure that I press that area flat. You don't wanna start going towards the back and then realize you have areas that are not aligned properly and have little bubbles in them, so to speak. Once you get the whole front perimeter all the way down to the ear secure, then you can remove the ear tabs that go back towards the top of the ear. Now we're ready to move on and my lovely assistant April will be removing the tabs. I'll tell you that she did say it was a little bit difficult to get them off with her nails. But once she got the hang of it, it went pretty quickly. 
So she is removing them and then she's pulling the wig down and securing it in place by pressing it with her fingers. She's doing such a lovely job. I am so blessed to have her and the fact that she was willing to get on here and help me with this video so that I could um, show you ladies all the do's and don'ts, probably more don'ts, was very kind of her and I love her to death. So we're past the center point of the back of the nape and she is just finishing up here. And believe it or not, I don't have a heck of a lot to say here. So let's just watch. Just want to jump in here real quick and state that if you are doing a long haired piece, make sure you have all that pulled back and it's best to have the wig ready in a high bun. So now I've just taken a wig grip, you could use a headband, a scarf, whatever works for you, and secure that little baby in place, and I'm going to let it set for, oh, a half hour. So now I have had it on for a half hour, I removed the band, and I'm just taking some alcohol swabs, and I'm cleaning up any excess glue that might have gotten on my skin because, well, you know why. So I'm making sure while I'm cleaning these areas that I'm not getting too close to where I've applied the glue or the tape. The reason for that being is alcohol will also loosen the grip of those adhesives and you don't wanna have to go back and redo it all over again. So the one thing that I'm learning right here in this part is I really don't want to use a regular elastic band on this piece particularly. It was kind of difficult to get it out, so I've decided I'll stick with the coil little plastic ties for the hair. It worked much better. So now I'm just wetting this wig down a little bit and combing her out with my fingers and my wig brush, and I'm getting ready for some pictures. Y'all, let me know what you thought of this video. Um, any tips, tricks, things you liked, things you didn't, please like and share it. And of course, remember to subscribe if you haven't already to our channel and smack that bell. We'd love to have you join us on Instagram and Facebook as well. We have a blast and we're all learning together. And trust me, everybody's on a learning curve. Hey everybody, so now we've completed the second video in our two-part series, the ball cap method and the installation of this little lady. So I wanted to give you a little update. I did sleep in her last night. So basically what I did was I took one of those big t-shirt um, headbands and I put it on and then I braided this little lady and that was it. I did have a little bit of discomfort the way I had her. I had the braid up here, so it wasn't exactly comfortable. So I'm going to do alternate ways of trying to, you know, secure it at night. One of the big things I did want to tell you, with a piece like this, I did find that trying to use a regular hair tie wasn't the best option. There is a lot of hair here now. Granted, this is uh, wet right now and it is air drying, but there's a lot of fullness here. So I actually found that these little ladies work better. And they come in a variety of colors. You, I mean, these are just a couple of the ones I have. Worked much better in securing the hair. I didn't have pulling. I didn't have any of the hair coming out with these. So that's a big plus if you're gonna be purchasing a piece like this. The second thing was, um, I did find that even with securing it down with the headband, I did have a small amount of rolling right through here. But I did just go ahead and push it back down. So it's not a huge deal, but I did have that. So I'm going to be looking for alternative ways, alternative methods to maybe get that stick to stay a little bit better. Well, I hope you enjoyed these videos. You know, by all means, please like and share these. And as I stated before, subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, I'll see you little ladies later. I love you. Bye-bye.